we started recognizing some of the um, changes in Matthew. Of course, you know, sometime at the beginning of the year, he just took off like a weed, just like I did when I was about his age. Mm -hmm. Not uncommon, but what came with that was losing the weight really fast and just not eating as much. And that's un unlike anybody in our family. Eat. And uh, he uh, he would have a plate of food and just eat one bite and be full, which I, I'm guessing over the time that we've been in the hospital and listening to other stories, it's very similar. Yeah, a lot of people have noticed some of the uh, things going on with their child. But he kind of stopped eating as much as he wanted to, he couldn't. And over time, another month or two went by, we just thought, oh, growing pains. You're stretching, you're growing, your aches and pains. We took this pediatrician, not thinking it was too serious, just uh, maybe some minor aches and pains. And he, uh, he did a better battery test, and nothing came back, you know, unusual. So that when you do that, and you, nothing comes back unusual, that made the doctor work, worry a little more. We were going so we took blood tests, and we got the results the next day, and immediately referred us to the oncology department at Paul Gilbert's, which scared the heck out of us. So we took him there, and that was the day before Bryce's birthday, on May 22nd. And they did more testing, and th that afternoon when we took him to the doctor at um, all children, they admitted him right to the hospital and uh, started scaring him a little bit. And then uh, from there, the one, one or two more tests, and they confirmed it the day of unfortunately Bryce's birthday that he had ALL, which is lipoplastic leukemia, which is the worst thing a parent could possibly, you know, hear or just I couldn't even imagine it. And it was just something we didn't expect, and it was one test after another, and. Uh, one bit of bad news after another once we were in the hospital. It was just a shame to, to watch any kid go through this low on your own. And it hit us like a ton of bricks and hit him even harder. We were just going along for the ride. That's all you can do. Uh, support them as best you can. And the doctors know best. They're wonderful at all joints. But uh, they set a plan out and he's almost 30, 32 days or so into it right now. So he's the first month was a week's worth of uh, every week, once once a week, uh, chemo. He's had a bunch of lumbar punctures and bone biopsies to show the progression. And now he's this week, or actually last week and this week, is the start of 56 days or so of four days a week of chemo. So that's even pretty tough for everybody. Mm -hmm. Not only do we have to watch him go through all this and he feels horrible, but then try to balance everything out with the family and work. It's not easy. Uh, my wife uh, takes care of Rice and takes him to school. And, dealing with MS with herself, and it's been difficult on her too, since the last thing you need to, with someone with uh, MS, it's stress. Yeah, so it's been a challenge for everybody, uh, but he's taken it probably better than we have. He's put up with pokes and uh, surgeries after surgeries, which is, I couldn't even imagine laying on the bed looking up at your parents and not being scared, but wow. he doesn't show it, which we'd love to see. I, I was, it's amazing to watch him go through it, and he's in pain at times. He's he's. You know, up and down with these emotions. They're a different person when you're on tons of drugs and chemo. Sure. I mean, I don't see how you can't be. But he's taking it well. He's a trooper. And no doubt that he'll get through this. It's just, it's going to be a long road. I mean, you're talking six to eight months of this kind of chemo and then a couple years of, I guess, maintenance, which I haven't even dug into yet to find out what that's all about. But it's coming. It's going to be a while before he's back to a normal routine. Once we spent a few weeks in the hospital or a couple weeks in the hospital thinking about it, him and then started realizing, oh no, we don't have insurance. What are we going to do? Is this going to tear us apart? I mean, I know how it was for a few procedures for me with insurance, taking a three or four thousand dollar hit to deductibles and all kinds of stuff, and it can set you back. Because we had insurance up until the uh, beginning of the year yeah. for him, and it just, things changed, and it, it was just one thing. It, yeah, and he was perfectly healthy. So yeah. Thinking, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's Murphy's Law. That's yeah, Murphy's Law. That's the way it goes. <laughs> We don't have a lot of family members between the two of us. Uh, the few people that we do, uh, my mother and stepfather have been you know, right there with us the entire time. Just We had a GoFundMe account started recently you know, through a cousin of mine, and it's slow, but there are people that wanted to help that are not here, because a lot of my relatives are up north, they have helped a little bit, same with their relatives over in England and some in Oklahoma. We're not really concerned so much for anybody. I think we kind of are self-contained, but we're also the kind of people that have never really asked for help. We certainly could use it, but we haven't really been asking for people to come in and help out with that, or help out with dinners and help out with all the things that people have offered so far. So it's been great to see, and it's a little humbling.